Hello and welcome to Affliction Sugarcoated, a podcast where we sugarcoat some of the world's so-called afflictions and rate their plausibility on a scale of 1 to 5. I'm Minnie Kim and today we will be sugarcoating 100%. It's a three hour, actually three one hour tests at different days on all different units. It was quite tiresome, especially when you have to wait anticipated for like a long time. It was grueling, especially because I'm not the biggest fan of math. I really don't know who in this world would enjoy trying to, I don't know, factor quadratic equations functions. Sorry, everyone hates it. And I hope you hate it too, because it's really useless. And it was nothing hard, by the way. It's just basic math that most people forget when they get older. And I'm not trying to be a prick here. Math is a very useful subject to, to some extent, I guess. And I and I agree that it requires almost the most brain power in comparison to all the other conventional subjects in school, like English or social studies or science. I, I mean, I'm discounting science because science is basically math when you get older. But... Everyone has to agree that math is pretty useless, unless you're pursuing a career that uses esoteric knowledge. For example, mathematicians, physicians, engineers, etc. Like, technically, if you take a job as, I don't know, a businessman, of course some math is required, but you really don't need to know calculus in order to function in your normal daily life. And given that I probably am not going to take a job in that mathematical f- mathematical field, I really didn't need to learn all this. But I did, because it's school, and I need to go to school. Math is pretty useful, I'd say, until about pre-algebra, when you start learning all the basic stuff, but rather re- learn all the stuff that we really just don't remember after about two years. The most important part is obviously the most rudimentary rudimentary stuff, addition, division, multiplication, etc., because that that is very useful in life, just because life is made that way. If we learn to master that, which should be pretty easy given that schools devote hours into math already, we sh- will soon learn how to calculate tax and sales and other stuff. Maybe I'm being short-sighted, but I inadvertently asked my math math teacher about a few months ago why quadratic functions and tables were necessary, and she responded by saying, because it helps you spot patterns. I have a lot of respect for teachers, but that really isn't a justification. That's the easy way out. The ability to spot patterns is done way better through other brain exercises, which are arguably, arguably more enjoyable. Like, maybe I'm paranoid, but ask yourself how to find the first quartile of 72, 81, 74, 78, 75, 84. I guarantee that no one can answer. I can ask Siri or go to a web search for a quicker answer, right? Just go to your Siri on your phone and just ask that question. I guarantee that it'll just come up with an answer. People will say, oh, that's why society's becoming dumber. Yes, because we are evolving to find the most convenient methods of everything until our brains are satiated. The intellectual disparity is growing, and yet I'm not willing to get a piece of paper to find out that first quartile. But back to the topic. As I said, I took the three tests, and I only recently found out that this final score Now, guys, I'm terrible at math. I'm not terrible, but I am good despite my Asian blood. I don't want to particularly reveal my score, especially because, as I said, this was really basic math. It really shouldn't be this hard, although I guarantee that if I ask an adult to solve it, no one really can. But I did get a score that doesn't really reflect my knowledge about our year's math content. I'm not complaining about the testing system by any way. I actually think that the current methods of testing are the most effective way to measure our knowledge. Luck just was not kind to me. I made absolutely silly mistakes that I will never 
make again, or at least I will try to learn to never make them again. What I'm trying to say is I did not expect 100%. I knew I screwed up even before I saw the score, but it still hurts to not be perfect. No one wants a piece of the pie. They want the whole pie, especially when that pie is dang good. Society glorifies the number 100. Centuries of a company, program, etc. A hundred looks good, sounds good, and generally feels good. Feels really amazing to reach hundred, I guess. Maybe it's me, but I like getting a hundred percent. I like getting hundreds. I like being at the top of my class in certain subjects, and I like the gratification and validation that is extracted from that number. I like the excellent or amazing next to that number on my test paper. Society has made the number 100 rewarding, especially when there's a percent sign next to it. It's the whole pie, the whole cake, the whole deal. I know you like it too. I guess 100 can be defined and read in several ways. Number 1. 100 out of 100 points. I think that's fairly self-explanatory when you get... 100% on your math exam, which I obviously could not do. Stuff like that. Number two, giving everything your 100%. That's more of the loser slash perseverance type of thing rather than actually being good at something. And yes, obviously, if you give something your 100%, it's likely that it'll turn out okay or it's best outcome at the very least. Number three. The definite possibility of something happening. This is certainly a very interesting one. Because if something is... There are only a certain number of... Set number of things with a definite possibility of occurring. For example, your death, my death, everyone's death. I think that is pretty much guaranteed. Unless in the next few years Elon Musk or someone else comes up with a eternal life potion or something probably very very unlikely so I'm just gonna read that as 100% what I'm doing right now is also very wrong I don't think that everyone dying is going to be 100% maybe in one day there will be an eternal potion or something like that but you know we'll have to see So I guess in one way there really is nothing that's guaranteed 100%. Let me know if you think of something, but right now I really can't. Yeah, along with I'm sure a lot of people, I prefer the second option because it denotes a positive connotation. I mean, the first is also pretty great, but it insinuates a building pressure, so... I'm going to give that a pass, although I do like pressure. And I drive to see that 100. But sometimes, only sometimes, like this math project or math exam or whatever assignment that I get assigned at school, do I stop for a second. I see my score and I get closer to breaking down. I need to keep my identity. I need to stop running and climbing I've made episodes about me striving for the top before. In fact, I connect that to almost everything because I see it as a salient facet of the gigantic pie we call life. I was scrolling through quotes about 100% looking for something to back my claim. Now, obviously, no one really looks at uninspiring quotes, which clearly reflected in the algorithm Google used. All of it was about giving life your 100%. I always wondered why 100 was so appealing. Maybe it was because of the two zeros. Maybe it was because it was an even number. A number that I suddenly forgot the name of that, but 10 times 10, you get the idea. It's a perfect square. Sorry. Yeah, that's the word. Either way, I thought I always drive for that hundred, as I mentioned before. Maybe hundreds are satisfying. That's why I like to achieve that top. But I think, rather, everyone connects in their brain one way or another. 
that 100 means success. When you earn 100k, like, a year, or a month even, I think that is what we call success. If you have a partner that you give 100% of your life to, and that partner also does that, and your love is requited, I think that also means success. When you look at your family and you're satisfied to all of your heart, I think we can also call that success. In the end, the reason why society glorifies 100, the number 100, the percent 100, everything 100, is just because it feels good. I really can't think of another reason. But deep inside, we all know that it's just because we like to win. Humans don't like to lose. We don't like losing to our worst enemy. We do not like losing to anyone, for that matter. All we do is strive for a win. And a hundred is directly correlated with that. So when I looked at my test paper, I didn't see a hundred. But I still didn't die. Still, it didn't feel good because I lost. Not against someone, although I did lose to my classmates who got a higher score than me. I lost to myself because I wanted to do well and yet I could not. And now I have navigated my feelings, something that a lot of people can't do when they feel stressed. And I think for that matter, that is enough. Now, let's step back from all this minutia and try to focus on the question I asked. I kind of answered it, but let me tell you a reason why society glorifies 100% or 100. It glorifies it for a reason. It marks the 10th 10. It's a perfect square. On a less numerical note, it drives people. I know a lot of people who live life for that 100%. I'm glad that they haven't had a burnout by now, but my math score hit me hard, and I don't want to think about that time when I could have used my limited time wiser or when I shouldn't have overthinked that question. I found it to be useless and debilitating to my own dismay. Call me stupid, but I've stressed for the 100 before. There have been times when I didn't get it and times when I did. Let's not focus on those times. Let us be better and not cry over a 99. I'm happy with my piece of the pie. I'm perfectly capable of tricking myself that quality matters over quantity. Yes, my slice of the pie tastes amazing. I give the sugar coating of 100% a 4. This podcast was written and produced by me, Minnie Kim. If you have any comments or reviews, please feel free to write any and all thoughts on your podcast reviews. If you would like to suggest an affliction for me to share code, please email me via afflictionsharecoded at gmail.com. Also check out my YouTube channel, which is also kind of the same name, afflictionsharecoded, obviously. Now, to end the podcast, think of the last time you got 100. As a young student, I can think of a lot, not to brag, but if you're an adult, it may challenge you. And I just don't mean 100% like you got on a test. Think of a time when you gave everything to something, when you gave your 100%, or maybe when you think of something that is guaranteed to happen, i.e. it it has 100% possibility. Okay, have a good day.